Well, President Trump firing back at Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib and Ilhan Omar after the pair slammed him over their ban uh, from Israel. Uh, and then a president tweeting, sorry, I don't buy Rep Tlaib's tears. I have watched her violent craziness and most importantly, words for far too long. Now tears. She hates Israel and all Jewish people. She is an anti-Semite. She and her three friends are the new face of the Democratic Party. Live with it. So the question now is, where does this saga go from here? Joining me to discuss former Florida Congressman, Lieutenant Colonel Alan West. Uh, Colonel West, thanks for joining us. Uh, I watched, I was riveted uh, actually by the press conference yesterday. And some of the, some of the uh, things that were said, you know, they, they, they're pretty good at walking up to a level, for instance, injecting apartheid into the conversation, knowing yeah. for years that many have equated Zionism to apartheid. Those kind of things, I think, hurt their other arguments, uh, and, and even the people who backed them are saying that maybe they shouldn't have, uh, you know, maybe Netanyahu shouldn't have stopped them from coming uh, into Israel in the first place, although that re was rescinded later. Your thoughts on that? Well, it's good to be with you, Charles. And let's be very honest. Uh, at some point in time, there have to be consequences to the radicalism and the statements and the comments that these two individuals, uh, Ms. Tlaib and also Ms. Omar, have made. Rashida Tlaib, if you do your background research, she has had some very interesting associations with uh, Islamic jihadists, Palestinian terrorists. As a matter of fact, she could have gone on the normal congressional delegation, something that I did back in 2011. But instead, she chose to uh, decline that invitation, and they accepted an invitation from a group by the name of MIFTA, which has association with Palestinian terrorism. Now, one of the things, doing her tears, and she was crying about checkpoints and her mother having to go through, well, why did the Israelis have to put those checkpoints out? Because during the time that she spent there, from, I believe, the ages 2 to 10, there were hundreds of Israelis and thousands that were wounded and killed because of Palestinian terrorism. And also, Ilhan Omar did not address the issue, how many millions and billions of dollars have been sent over to the, to the Fatah, uh, the Palestinian Authority, and they've in turn used that money as payments to the families of uh, Palestinian terrorists and members of uh, Al-Quds, Al-Aqsa Brigade, right. and Islamic Jihad. So, uh, you know, also there was talk of the occupation of Palestine. And mm -hmm. then uh, another issue that kind of caught my attention, and I think people have picked up on it, hinting perhaps at stop of, of America stopping its funding uh, efforts with Israel. Uh, you know, of course, yes. this, this latest funding package was initiated by the Obama administration. Yeah, absolutely right. And one of the things that both of them have to come to realize is that the BDS movement, the Boycott, Divest, and Sanctions movement, that is a movement that would undermine and destroy our best ally in the Middle East, the modern-day state of Israel. And for them to have said prior to them being elected that they would not participate in the BDS movement, but then once they became elected, they signed on to it. And when you think about Rashida Tlaib from the House floor, she compared our ally, Israel, uh, to Nazi Germany, saying that the sanctions that we were looking to put on Israel would be just the same as if we were sanctioned in Nazi Germany. And of course, let us not forget that this is the same Rashida Tlaib that said that the Holocaust gave her a calming feeling. Yeah. Uh, let's switch to a, a, a more fun topic, uh, the idea of the United <laughs> yeah. States buying Greenland. <laughs> of course, President Trump, he yeah. seems real serious about this. In fact, he tweeted out a photo uh, of, that's it. Uh, he says, I promise not to do this to Greenland. Uh, it was just uh, fun and games at this point. But uh, you know what? Yeah. Some people are wondering, is this actually, you're someone who understands uh, positioning, geography, and what it could mean to the United States. Could it be a venture worth pursuing? Well, we already have an agreement with Greenland. Lots of times our troops, when they're transporting over into that theater of operations, uh, being Europe and the Middle East, they have a, a stop off there in Greenland with those uh, airport facilities. But I think that the president was just pulling the leg of the media and just uh, seeing how far they would go with this. But I'd like to make a recommendation to the president. If you're going to buy Greenland, I think that you should make uh, Miss Ocasio-Cortez the governor of <laughs> Greenland, and she can have her Green New Deal there all she wants. All right. Hey, real quick, um, Colonel West, um, you're running for uh, the uh, president uh, of the Texas GOP. How's that going?
Yeah, uh, last week, Thursday, we announced that uh, we would be running to be the next chairman of the Republican Party of Texas. Charles, it's going very well. I think that when you look at the ideological battle in the United States of America, it's right here in Texas. The fact that the progressive socialist left believes that they can take Texas and flip it just the same as they've done Nevada, Colorado, New Mexico, and Arizona, yeah. that, that should be a big challenge for us, and we're not going to allow that to happen on my watch. Well, let's face it, uh, Mr. O'Rourke did pretty good that last time out. He didn't win, but he did enough, I guess, to scare folks. Uh, Lieutenant yes, Colonel West, did. thank you very much. Appreciate it.